Hey folks, it's Fist25 coming back at you for another ship review. And uh, yeah, this thing uh, behind me is the Consolidated Outland Nomad. The uh, premium uh, ship, starter ship. It's, it's a pretty nice ship. And uh, we're going to take a look at this ship and do some stuff with it. And that's coming at you right now. All right, so welcome back. Thank you for coming back to the channel. Fisting Java, save the universe. And uh, yeah, let's do another ship review. Um, this is the last in my line for Consolidated Outland. I've already done the all the Mustang stuff out there, and I did a video on the Hover Quad. So we're here at HDMS Edmund on Hurston, and check it out behind me. Check it out. No landing gear, folks. This is this is the only ship really uh, in the verse without any actual landing gear that touches the ground, which kind of makes it unique. There's actually a lot of things that make the Nomad unique. And uh, let's let's go explore them. All right. So the Nomad here, it's a single seater. It is a kind of a light freight type of ship, although it is uh, pretty heavily armed. Um, you can see right up front that it has a ton of uh, cockpit glass and it has a very unique shape. It, it, it's kind of a uh, kind of a weird pancake shape. Uh, you'll see that more when we actually take off and fly. But uh, coming down from the bottom, you can see there's one of the guns. Uh, I have everything stock in the ship except for the power plant, which is it's a little underpowered. So I upgraded that. Um, but that's one of the size two guns that's on a gimbal. And you can see on the top... There is a uh, two-gun turret. Those are also size twos on a gimbal. You can upgrade those to fixed size threes. Let's come around the starboard side of the ship. You can see these uh, circles, these red circles. Those are the missiles. Um, there are uh, actually quite a few missiles on this ship. There's, uh, uh, there's at least eight per side. So 16 missiles on a starter ship. That's quite a lot. You can see there's a thruster down there. Um, this is this triangular thing is technically our landing gear down here. And it kind of uses this weird kind of grav lev technology where it doesn't actually touch the ground. And that could be pretty cool in a lot of different instances. Um, there is no ramp on this ship either. It's a ladder to get in. So, um, yeah, a little bit different. Um, you can see there's a big kind of horizontal rudder stabilizer thing coming out of the top back of this ship and they are they're the same on both sides and uh while we still don't have movable surfaces in the game it uh it, it definitely provides a different look now as you can see in the back here this is the cargo area it is 24 scu of cargo and it's the reason i like to call this the the ford pickup truck or the ford ranger of star citizen um Let's go ahead and open the cargo bay. Here is the entrance, or I guess we open it up. Saying you can load vehicles into this cargo bay. Um, let's go ahead and climb up in there. And you do have a, a what it fully retracts. That you have a little peek inside the ship. Can I retract this from here? I don't think I can. Maybe there's a button. I just don't know where it's at um, to retract. Oh, there we go. Close cargo bay. So when you have cargo in this and you're flying around and stuff, it's not supposed to fall out, even though it kind of looks like it's going to. Same with vehicles. You can load up uh, an ROC into this guy, a hover quad. Um, you can load up a, uh, I believe, a cyclone in here. And I think the dragonfly and the Nox. So you can fit quite a few vehicles in here. And this is actually a little peek into the inside of the ship. We'll... We'll see more of that when we're uh, <clears throat> when we're actually inside the ship. Now, as far as coming off here, I can just go and I can jump over here. But your cargo and your vehicles should stay put. I remember when the ship was new, they they tended to fall out and that was not fun. Um, up here is the actual door enter ship and open ladder it has one of the cooler ladders in the game. 
And then we'll keep coming around the port side, and you can see it is symmetrical to the starboard side of the ship. Um, we can see our our ordnance warning for our missiles over there, and our thrusters, and uh, things like that. Um, it does have retro thrusters, which are up here in that area. And then actually quite a bit of glass. You can see where the rudder pedals are for your feet. You can see down through that uh, from the cockpit. So that pretty much concludes the exterior tour of the Nomad. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. So we're going to hit enter ship. Super cool ladder sound, right? Um, easily get into the ladder. It's very alien like. I think that's cool. I, th I really like that, actually. Um, as we come down into the, I don't know what to call it, the foyer. Huh. Um, it is a very cozy ship. It's very, it's still pretty tight, even though it's, uh, you know, meant to be a single player ship to go on longer missions. The definition of a nomad. Here's the uh, back viewing area, as we can see, for the cargo access. And we can actually open the cargo bay and close the cargo bay from here. Um, but you can see, we can see out the back there pretty well. Um, over here is, should be a component bay. Yep. So we're able to access some of our ship components there. Although none of that stuff really is, is working just yet. Um, over here is a, a door with a toilet. I don't see a shower up there, so I don't think it's a full toilet. Um, it does have a toothbrush, um, some toothpaste, a razor. And yeah, you can even uh, you can even sit on the toilet and do your business. That'll be important when hygiene comes in. And I may be stuck. I think I'm stuck on the toilet, guys. There we go. Three seventeen PTU is not the most stable of patches right now. Um, but I did want to do the PTU because I like the clouds on Hurst. <clears throat> okay, so this is the closet area. Um, so this will be where you could store uniforms and helmets and things like that. Um, ship's inventory type stuff. And that is the back area of the Nomad. Going into the middle section, this is uh, all the creature comforts in here. There really is only a couple interactables, and that's the bed and a chair that pulls out. But you do have a bed where you can sleep and stuff in, in the Nomad. And you have some decorations here, some books, uh, alien plant. Um, looks like you have an O2 section here. I believe this might also be the, your ejection pod. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, and you have a hair pick for some reason. Um, over here, you have standard um, induction heating. Um, you have your sink, some some soy sauce and some other food um, over here. I actually just put this pips thing down after I drank it and it's been staying there the whole time. So good on good on that for persistence. And then here is a microwave. Uh, nothing interactable with that. A coffee cup and some, I guess, some workout stuff. Um, you can interact with this chair, which is your chair for your little table here. Your white uh, marble uh, uh, eating surface here and you can eat your meals and do whatever you got to do here get up out of your chair it's actually a pretty neat feature and we can close up our chair okay let's come into the cockpit area and there's nothing really special in here there's no other component access or anything like that it's really just sit in the chair um, but before we actually do the cockpit layout and all that stuff <clears throat> I am going to run and go get some cargo and show you what that looks like with a full load of cargo. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. So we're back and here is a full load of diamonds, uh, 24 SCU worth of diamonds. And that's how it fits in the, the back of the Nomad. We're actually, as part of the flight test, we're going to check the atmosphere flight as we head into Lorville and we'll go ahead and trade that. And then uh, we'll do a, if it fits its ships a little bit later in the video to see what kind of vehicles fit in there. Let's go ahead and get back into the ship. 
You can see our view is now obstructed at the back because it's full of cargo. Okay, let's head into the cockpit area. I actually like, really like this, this cockpit seat. Um, I think it's actually really, really nice. Uh, I like the, the brown leather, perforated leather stuff. And there we go. So actually one of the best screens in all of, uh, all of the ships that uh, I've flown in. Um, it has a lot going on and let's go ahead and fire up the engines. There we go. It has a lot of screens available right here at your fingertips. And this is one of the first ships that actually had a decently gold pass done on it. I don't love that there's a, just a 2D radar here, but it is what it is. Um, you can see we can turn our engines on and off. There's um, what, one, two, three, four MFDs that you can actually manipulate. There's our power button. Um, and these are the default displays. So target, your ship status, comms, and your capacitor status. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, it looks like all these sliders should work, but I don't see a lot of them actually working. Oh, it looks like ejection is out of the front seat. So we, we would be able to eject out of there. Exit to your left. <clears throat> Open exterior and press to unlock or on the left side. And there we go. Other than that, it is the, the standard HUD for 3.17. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ship from the outside. Let me zoom in a little bit. And we can see that our cargo is fully seated into the, the cargo storage area. Our engines are lit up. Those blue lights are our engines. And we'll come around here to the front. It looks, it's just got this weird kind of look to it, right? Um just very shaped very oddly um okay we'll go back to our default view zoom out just a little bit we're gonna go ahead and uh raise up a little bit notice that was just space bar so our, our nose did lift up a little bit and we will retract our landing gear and that's what that looks like as it goes fully up and in there nice clean look to the nomad We'll zoom out a little bit and let's just, uh, let's do some SCM atmosphere flying around the, uh, HDMS Edmonds on Hurston, not, not too far from Lorville and we're flying over the ocean here. I guess it's the ocean. It might be a sea, but, uh, super polluted tons of wreckage and things like that. Um, the details that are in this are pretty, pretty wicked. Pretty wicked. So from the cockpit seat, you can see in atmosphere in Hurston, we're doing about 170 for our SEM speed. Let's kick it up and see uh, what we can do. I don't think it's going to get too high just because we're in atmosphere. So it's looking like mid 240s might even breach 250 if we keep going. We'll get, gain some altitude here with some upward thrust. Oh, there's another ship over there. He's probably messing with me. Looks like a Cuddy Black. And uh, well, let's do a slow aileron roll here. Pretty cool. Actually, a decent roll rate for the Nomad. Let's uh, Let's check the pitch rate here. Not super great, but not horrible. Um, it, it's kind of what I would expect from, from the Nomad here. And let's check the yaw and atmosphere. Um, pretty slow on average. But again, this is not a fighting ship. It's just, uh, it's, it's more, it, it's supposed to be this premium starter ship. Let's go ahead and do a weapons check. You see left button. Right trigger doesn't do anything. Right mouse button. All of our stuff is firing from the left mouse button. And from the cockpit seat, 
That's what that looks like. And these are gimbaled, so I should turn the gimbals on. And there we go. You can see that the gimbals do, in fact, move. Um, we have, it looks like, 30 shots with a balanced capacitor, which is not great, but uh, it's not horrible either. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I do have a little bit of a cold, so if I'm coughing, I apologize. Let's go ahead and head on out of the atmosphere here. And we will go ahead into Lorville, which is always interesting to land because it's so windy out of Lorville. We'll head up to our 90. We'll take a look at the back. See, our cargo is still staying put, even though we're at 90 degrees up. And let's uh, show you what afterburner looks like. There's our afterburner. And it's a fairly slow burn for afterburner. Um, it's not the best. It, like, the whole A is really good, but it's not the worst. Quite a bit of boost in there. And there we go. So we made it up to 13,000 pretty easily. <clears throat> let's go into, let's see if we can find an OM marker before we black out. OM4. Let's check our spaceflight characteristics. Okay, here's our quantum. Okay, we are through quantuming. Oh, a little bit of a load time delay there. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see what our top speed here is on the Nomad. So it moved up pretty darn quick to top speed. Um, acceleration's actually pretty good. Looks like about 1170 is our maximum speed here. Um, you can see we are cruising pretty quickly. And here's what uh, the Nomad with the base paint job looks like from the outside with a little bit of sun on it. Uh, again, it's kind of a weird design for a ship, but um, it actually has quite a bit of fuel, surprisingly. It has more fuel than other ships with size one components. Um, our yaw in space, let's use Hurston as a reference, not too terribly bad. Our roll in space is a little bit better. And our pitch is about what we expected. It's about what we saw in atmosphere. Okay, with that being said, let's uh, let's head down to actual Lorville. There's Lorville. Let's sync our quantum up and engage. Quantum always looks a little different in third person. And these clouds on Hurston are pretty darn crazy. Pretty interesting. Um, so much different than Microtech, um, but I'm glad they're here. And there we go. Very light on sound. <laughs> and we can see below us <coughs> is Tiasa Spaceport. see our nomad in the clouds maybe that'll be the thumbnail who knows let's go back to first person we're probably going a little too fast quantum always sticks too doesn't it so contact ATC to land. We're going to turn on our VTOL and our gear. And now we have our, uh, our one button settings for calling ATC, which is honestly probably the biggest quality of life improvement in this patch. We do have a small hangar over here. I hope. Is it putting us in a giant hangar? It's, it's just really weird. <laughs> it's putting us in this really big hangar. It's made for like a caterpillar. 
<clears throat> but whatever. It's uh, first in ATC. Maybe they uh, maybe they're having a rough go of it today. With that being said, really good stability coming in, uh, considering Hurston is is known for its heavy wind. Um, it's actually really, really stable. And there we go. Let's come down for a nice, gentle landing right on this oil stain. And there we go. And we're not actually touching the deck, folks. Remember, we have our Grav Lab landing gear. And we are down. Okay, let me just uh, give her some gas, some repairs. Apparently we didn't use any quantum fuel and uh, that's about it. Let's uh, I'm going to go sell all these diamonds and uh, we'll see how much we made and we'll head on back to uh, to the Nomad and we will go uh, do a, probably a solo dogfight. And then we'll also do, uh, if it fits its ships, then we will go over the kind of the stat page. There's like a brochure website type thing uh, that also has the video in it. So stay tuned for that. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys. So here we are at CBD at Hurston and Lauraville. We're going to go ahead and do a sell for our Nomad. And we'll pick up those diamonds and 17,632. There we go. Successful cargo run complete. And uh, I think now the next part of the video is going to be the solo dog fight. So I will see you there. All right, guys, since our last uh, bounty was a bust because they apparently ran into a, an asteroid and killed themselves. Um, we're taking on ECN alert. If it works in 317, I guess we'll see. There is our, our, our guy we have to protect in a freelancer. Good old Benny Spade over there. Tech civilian. Okay. And like I said, we're just trying to show off some of the capabilities of the Nomad. No idea if we're actually going to have a chance at winning this or not, but that is probably a bad guy. Oh, screwed that one up. Oh, wow. All right. Let's see what we can do against this Cuddy Black since we kind of missed our missiles there. Those uh, size twos go through ammo really fast. Yeah, I'm gonna increase the uh, the recharge rate of our lasers here. Come on, baby, take out that cutty. Oh, a little bit of janky desync. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him talking, but it's actually pretty funny. Having a rough time here getting faster kills on this cutty. Taking some hits. I don't feel like the gimbal's actually working, but it may be because of uh, some some of that janky desync. A little bit of freezes here and there. Okay, there goes one of them. What's next? Let's see if we can get some missiles off here. We, we just hit ourselves with missiles. Super. Shield's critical because I hit myself. 
So uh, apparently that's still broke. Uh, we're going up against the Drake Buccaneer. Okay, it looks like our shields are back up. Woo! It's weird doing this on mouse and keyboard, but I do that for the videos. Or normal, because I figure a lot of people probably play mouse and keyboard. It's definitely different using the stick. And again, I don't feel like our gimbals are really being used. I don't feel like they're tracking it. Maybe they are, and we just don't see it. Okay, there goes the buck. Let's try our missiles again. Okay, they definitely went out. I don't know if they hit. It looks like they hit. Is it though? Okay, I got a couple bad guys on me. Okay, he went up. This one is a cutty black. I feel like I should have changed out to have uh, three size threes instead of gimbals. They just don't feel like the gimbals are doing a whole lot here. Okay, that Cuddy Black went quick. All right, we successfully protected our civilian. Okay, what whatever he was saying there. And uh, we protected our civilian. Contract complete, easy admission, and 21,000 credits. Wow. Pretty darn good for the uh, good old Nomad here. Um, it looks like we did take some damage when we hit ourselves with our own missile. So, <laughs> that's always fun. Well, I am off to... Uh, Looks like Ida here to get some repairs done. The uh, next section of the video is going to be if it fits, it ships. And uh, we'll see what kind of stuff fits in the back of the, the good old Nomad. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the if it fits, it ships section of the video. We're going to see uh, what ground vehicles fit inside the Nomad here. And I can tell you right now, I have a... I have an Ursa Rover out here, and I can pretty much guarantee this is not going to fit. It's too wide and it's too long. But we're going to give it a shot. I mean, it like, it climbs up on it. But, and that's with the weapons down. But I'm not sure that will actually fly and stay in one piece. Um, it's possible though. So <laughs> that is what the Ursa Rover looks like going on to the Nomad. Um, next up, we're going to go grab uh, a Nox and see what that looks like. Stay tuned. Okay, folks. So here we are with the Apoa Nox and, uh, that's a crazy effect that I haven't seen. All that are to redo for a windstorm coming in. Gosh, PTU is nuts, isn't it? Um, but we're going to keep loading our vehicle anyway. Um, it looks like the Nox fits actually really well. We'll turn the engines off. I don't think there would be any problem with having the Nox on there. It looks like we could have gone forward just a little bit more. Um, so it shouldn't be an issue with the Nox. So let's go grab a Drake Dragonfly, which... I'm concerned it might be a little bit too long, but we might be able to get it in diagonally. So let's see what that looks like. All right, everybody. So here we are with the Drake Dragonfly. And it's a little bit longer than the Apoa Nox. So I am concerned that it won't fit in here. 
Let me go diagonal in here. Oh, it doesn't like it. Yeah, so it's... I mean, it fits. I think it would actually probably be okay because it's. it looks like it's completely into the cargo grid. I think that would actually be okay. I don't think it would fall out. So that's what a Drake Dragonfly looks like coming in diagonally to the Nomad. And yes, we are cockeyed because I'm facing this way. So uh, with that being said, let's go grab the Consolidated Outland Hover Quad, which was the vehicle that was really designed to go with the uh, Nomad. And uh, it should fit in there with no problems. Let's go grab it. Try it out. All right, folks, so here we have the hover quad out here, and uh, let's give it a shot to fit inside the Nomad, which it shouldn't have any issues. Let's lower it down. It does have the shortest length out of any of the Gravlev vehicles. Oh, that wasn't great. Um, there we go, shut off the motor. And without any issue, it fits in there like a glove. Um, might even be able to get two of them in there. So no problem with the hover quad. Uh, let's move on to another ground vehicle. Let's go grab a cyclone and we'll see if that fits. All right, everybody. So here we are with the cyclone MT and we're going to try to fit this onto the back of a nomad. Shouldn't be an issue. And there we go. It's in there nice and tight, but it all the way against, up against the wall. It takes up the whole cargo grid, but it shouldn't be an issue um, having the, uh, the, the cyclone in here. So I think that fulfills that requirement. Now let's go try out the rock DS and then we'll try the rock. Um, I believe the rock does fit no issues. Um, the rock DS might be a little bit too big. But then again, so was the Ursa Rover. So let's try it out. Hey, folks. So uh, right now, um, I'm trying to get into the Rock DS. And you notice there's a change of venue here. We are at, uh, over by Lorville. And there's a bug in the PTU where um, when I go to try to enter the, the Rock DS, uh, it just freezes. I can't get in. I can't do anything else. Um, so I'm just kind of stuck here. So with that being said, I want to apologize. Um, I can tell you for sure. I've done some testing in previous streams and such. The Rock DS does not indeed fit into the Nomad. And the ROC, the regular Rock, does fit because it is not as long as the Rock DS. So my apologies on that. Um, I didn't want to... Uh, delay this video any longer um just to get some footage of a rock and a rock ds um but needless to say i hope you can see in here how you know if it fits it ships type thing a lot of ships or i'm sorry a lot of ground vehicles do fit inside the nomad and uh including the roc the drake dragonfly the nox the hover quad which is what it was made for and the cyclone so you can do a lot of uh, ground vehicle stuff inside that open cargo area, uh, including maybe some hot drops and stuff like that. If you and your friends want to uh, try to do a little bit of multiplayer with that, you just open the cargo bay and boom, just let them drop out. So um, there you go. Uh, next section should be the loadout. And let's get on with that. All right, folks. So in this section of the video, we're going to talk about the loadout of the Consolidated, consolidated Outland Nomad. Um, this is a light freight transporter ship, uh, size two, crew size one. It is a solo ship. It can also, you know, still considered a starter ship. Um, it has a personal inventory capacity of 1.5 SCU. Now this is the this is the PTU side, so th this is subject to change. Um, total hit points uh, added up from the body and the nose, uh, give it about 9,800 hit points. So not horrible, but not great. Um, 
definitely can take a couple hits, but uh, not a glass cannon. So that that's that's decent. Um, the SCM speed is 180, and the maximum speed 1,171. The controls here, you can see that the max pitch is 42 degrees. Um, pretty pretty average for a ship like this. Um, 42 is actually probably better than it should have been. Um, the max yaw is 40. Again, pretty average. And the roll is 148, which I think is below average. Um, I think the Nomad should be able to roll a little bit better. I mean, I don't know. It's 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 a it's a giant flying pancake. So it's 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 a little different. Um, the hydrogen capacity three hundred twenty eight thousand, and notice the quantum fuel capacity is seven hundred seventy one, which is a little bit different than most um, starter ships. I should say it does have a size one quantum drive, but it has a much higher uh, quantum fuel capacity. Um, so it can go further, which is kind of, you know, it's a called a nomad for a reason. So it is definitely built to travel where most size one ships, say like a Gladius or something that's going to have size one components. It has 583 liters of quantum fuel where the nomad has 771. So. Let's look at the stats for sustained and burst damage. Um, stock, completely stock with three size two laser repeaters. Uh, the burst damage is 1200, uh, but really the sustained damage is 495 uh, DPS. Um, and that's, that's nothing to shake your stick at, but uh, if you like gimbal weapons, this, this ship comes stock really, really loaded out well for weapons um <clears throat> the shields um so that there's here's the the rub about the nomad um the nomad has three size one shields um sort of like the saber and that makes it so it's a size two ship but it has all like size one components three size one shields is something to think about um it's going to remain a bubble shield even in 3.17 so having three shields it makes it that much tougher to take down um versus uh your normal starter ship like a pisces or um like an aurora or something like that the power we're looking at 1782 out of 2104 so power is almost maxed so we may want to look at upgrading the power plant cooling 94,000 out of 400 uh, I wouldn't mess with the coolers um, and we'll get into that in a minute it has pretty high EM and IR so you're not really going to stealth this guy out um, you could get it a little bit stealthier for sure with stealth components but uh, you're going to have to go ballistics and everything and full stealth components. It's going to be, uh, you're still going to have fairly high EM and IR no matter what you do. So let's take a look at the, uh, weapons here. All three laser repeaters, they're all, um, gimbaled. So what can we do? We can, we can size up. I actually like this configuration, uh, with the gimbals because, the Nomad doesn't necessarily maneuver super well, so the gimbals do help on that aim assist. Um, but if you are a hardcore damage guy, uh, I would sw I would recommend switching them out for um, CF337 Panthers. Um, and that's going to give you, you're going to lose the gimbal, but it's going to give you more DPS. So you're going to be at 190 sustained DPS versus 157. Now, of course, this is going to up the power draw as well. So let's finish putting all three weapons on, get rid of our gimbals. Whoops, I didn't mean to do all three different weapons. Um, okay, there's our laser repeat. Oh, there we go. There's our laser repeaters. So now our, our sustained uh, DPS is 520 um, versus, uh, I mean, it's significantly better than it was before, right? Um, I think it was in the fours, right? 
For the missiles, I, I'd leave it alone. I really like the stock loadout. It comes with eight missiles. Uh, these are size four hard points. So you, you, uh, it looks like they are bespoke as well. So I don't, I don't think we can change out these hard points. They have to be size twos. So you could change them out with uh, Tempest twos. Uh, they come with Strike Force twos. I'd probably recommend going with Dominator twos with EMs. Um, uh, they do the most damage, or you can mix and match and do something like that. Um, then let's look at the shields. <laughs> so 1,500 hit points and civilian grade C. All three of them are web civilian grade Cs. I would, because the shields are really the same hit points, they just kind of have a, a few different stats. I would still recommend in 317 to upgrade uh, on the civilian side of the shields. Um so I would recommend going with a 7SA Concord. And uh, we can see it goes from 1500 to 1725. And that'll next you qu quite a bit more shields there. Um, you could always go, if you like the military side, you can go with the FR-66s. Um, much more expensive than the civilian ones. So my recommendation, at least in this patch, is to stick with the 7SA Concords uh, because of the price. Now, the power plant, I, I would recommend to upgrade the power plant. Civilian power plants are not known for <laughs> their robustness. And this is something that has, uh, can have an impact on your ship. So let's go ahead and either do a JS300 uh, power plant or a Quadracell, but I would recommend the JS300. Military grade A, see that takes our power here down to the halfway point, which is just fine. Plenty of power to go around. I wouldn't even touch the coolers. I mean, you could go with some industrial ultra flows and it'll double the cooling capacity, but I don't think we need them. I think they're fine as they are. The one thing I would definitely change um, is the quantum drive. These civilian grade, this civilian quantum drives for grade C are not that great. Although it's not, it's not horrible. Um, but I would either go with an Atlas, um, which is a civilian grade A, a little bit faster than the Expedition. Um, faster spool and spool down times, but I would actually go, I would recommend the Voyage. Um, 157,910 kilometers a second. It's the fastest civilian drive. Um, it still has pretty good spool up and spool down times. Um, however, since the Nomad has a higher fuel capacity, we could possibly go with military drives. Let me see here. Even the Beacon which is a significantly faster drive than any of the civilians. That's the slowest civilian drive. And you could go to Crusader to Hurston in four and a half minutes, but you'd have to stop for gas if you're going the longest distance in, in the Stanton, which is Microtech to Arc Corp. Um, you could even go with the VK-00 and pretty much get anywhere. Um, you're only saving seconds at this point of Hurston to Crusader. Um, and you're paying a little bit more for each one. Um, yeah, I would say stick with the beacon if you're going to go with the military drive, which which is completely reasonable. Uh, everything else, I think, is a little just a little too slow. So I would either say the Atlas, the Voyage. You want to save a little bit on fuel costs. I guess you could go with the stealth drives. But again, none of them can go Microtech to Arc Corp. Only the civilian drives can do that. And then last but not least, let's talk about the paints. There's a ton of paints for the Consolidated Outland Nomad. Let's talk about the first one. That is the Nomad 2951 Auspicious Red Ram Livery. That is a mouthful to say. Um, uh, that is uh, this year. And, or no, it was last year. Sorry. And uh, I believe this came out at Chinese New Year because uh, I think last year was Year of the Ram or something like that. And... Uh, it's actually a pretty neat, fully red paint screen for, for this ship. And there's there's a lot of reds and shades of red for the Nomad. And I think this is pretty neat. It does match the interior quite well. The second paint up on the docket is the Nomad Cherry Blossom livery. So this one is a little too girly uh, for my particular taste with the whites and the pinks. Um, I believe this came out as a... I mean, the Nomad came out before Orison came out, and Orison is the landing zone with the cherry blossoms. So maybe this was kind of a play on that, like, a, hey, foreshadowing. 
but uh it's an okay paint um i have it because i bought the pack um, but otherwise i wouldn't have bought this it's just not a paint for me next up is the nomad conifer livery this is a lot of green um I don't remember if this came out at uh, St. Patrick's Day in 2021 or not. Um, I, I'm sure Jawa, this is his favorite color because he likes the green, you know, but uh, it, it's a little too much green. I would have liked it to have some green and some real hard blacks. I think that would have been a much better color um, or even a, a, a camouflage or something with a tree pattern or something. But uh, overall, it's, it's an okay paint, and that, that is the conifer livery. Next up is my favorite livery for the Nomad. That is the Jackal livery. That is the, the mostly black and a little bit of red. And um, I really like this livery. Uh, this is my favorite. Uh, stock would be my second favorite. This just uh, hits all the points for me. Um, I like ships that are dark, especially out in space, but have a little bit of... Uh, I don't want to say badging, but uh, yeah, a little bit of panache, a little bit of flair, that little bit of red. I think it's really cool. The next livery up is the Nomad Lovestruck livery. This came out at Valentine's Day in 2022, and uh, it's very pink, and um, I don't like it. Um, I bought it. Um, of course, you know, I got to do the video. I got to show up the paint, but uh I think that's going in my melt bin, and I don't think that's something I'm ever going to buy back. I'm just not a fan of the Lovestruck livery. Next up is the Nomad Polar Camo livery. Uh, this is standard polar camo, just like uh, all the other polar camos uh, that we have in the game. Um, it's white with gray and black uh, camo spots on it. Um, it looks pretty good. It actually hides really well at Microtech and, and, and Snow Planets and things like that. But uh, again, it's it's... You know, it, it's very, it's super repeatable because so many different ships have it that I, I fell out of love with it a long time ago. And last but not least, we have the Nomad Sandstone livery, uh, which is kind of different. Um, it's got some browns, some red browns, and I don't hate this. This is probably my third favorite livery out of the group, with fourth being the uh, Auspicious Red Ram. But yeah, the sandstone livery, it looks pretty cool. It's It's got some, some neat highlights. Um, I guess CIG calls it amber as the colors and a metallic orange finish. Um, as we move around the, the, the sun around, you can definitely see that it's very, very orange and it has black and white highlights. Okay, and so that is all of the paints for the Nomad. Let's go ahead and put our items into the cart and... Uh, Let's go check out our cart and see what we got to buy. Um, so for my upgrades here, uh, laser repeaters, um, new missiles, shields, new quantum drive, new power plant. I'm not sure why this repeater is in there. And we don't need that uh, quantum drive. Okay, so full upgrade cost, 101,065 alpha UBC. It looks like we can get pretty much everything over at area 18 and big genie point except for the js 300 you'd have to go to oris and grim hex or her l2 her l2 being the closest to our corp. so there we go guys um that is the loadout for the nomad uh, next up is going to be the cig stop doing brochures and so they kind of have like a web page and we're going to look at that web page with uh, some information on the Nomad, and then we'll, we'll do the commercial as part of that, and then we'll get into the Chase Camera dogfight. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching. All right, folks. So here we are at the uh, the RSI, basically the the, the page for the uh, Nomad by Consolidated Outland. Um, <clears throat> let's go over it a little bit. Uh, take on the galaxy. Fly it now. Uh, everything you need to start a new adventure. Imagine the versatility of a medium-sized, multi-purpose freighter packed into a compact frame. Imagine a ship designed for lone pilots fighting their way across a galaxy teeming with possibilities. The Nomad is ready to go anywhere and do anything. The perfect solution for anyone yearning to start a brand new adventure. So this, this is a cool picture of the Nomad. It's kind of hovering because it's the only ship in the game that does the uh, the weird grav-lev landing gear. Um, 
So this is the video of when it was revealed by uh, Jax McCleary and Jimmy. And we're going to watch this at the end of this section of the video. And that will be the commercial. Uh, True Freedom, Pure Performance, Take on the Galaxy. This is a really cool picture of the Nomad. The model of self-sufficiency, the spirit of the open sky. The Nomad is as rugged as it is refined. Thanks to three size two laser repeaters that will keep you in the fight and out of potentially deadly scrapes. No corner of the galaxy is out of bounds. That's pretty cool. You can see where the missiles come out. These little uh, circular holes when the missiles operator modes turned on. The back of the Nomad. Take it with you. The Nomad combines the utility of a larger class freighter with consolidated outlands renowned cutting edge design philosophy. With a groundbreaking 24 SCU open cargo bed, this is a ship that lets solo pilots get the tough jobs done right, conquering the galaxy on their own terms. So once again, this is the the Ford Ranger of Star Citizen. I don't want to call it an F-150 or whatever your preferred uh, American truck of choice is, a Dodge or a Chevy or a Toyota or whatever. Um, it's a unique design to have this cargo ramp in the back and it does work i've used it for cargo i've used it for vehicles and uh it's pretty neat and then we get that little porthole where we can see our stuff back there too from the inside of the ship so i don't know it's different and i think it's actually pretty neat although i think it's going to be really easy to steal uh that's the problem with open you now if i had stuff in the back of my pickup truck and i parked somewhere uh, unsavory then that's my fault if someone steals that stuff. So think about that. Dare to change the game. Why use run of the mill materials or 25th century composites when you have access to something superior? The unique alloy used throughout the Nomad's hull epitomizes consolidated outlands dedication to uncommon style and avant garde tech. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like uh, the Nomad, Nomad, and I love the coloring and the, and the wear that comes with the Nomad. It looks like a ship that's been used, a ship that's been uh, lived in. Um, I don't love the shape, but then again, it took me a long time to, to fall in love with the F-117 Stealth Fighter. Um, and that's a really weird shape. Um, so, yeah, the Nomad. Okay, let's explore the Nomad. Here's a little little interactive piece here. The lasers. With three gimbal size two laser repeaters mounted for maximum impact, the Nomad empowers you to explore the galaxy's more treacherous corners. Number... Do we just go to six? All right, let's go to two. Two. Mesles. When the stakes are high, the Nomad is prepared for the, for the worst with four dedicated missile mounts. Um, I believe it has... Yeah, it has... So it has four missiles per mount, but there's only two mounts. So, strange wording. Roam Free, a full accommodation suite, empowers you to travel far and wide without taking civilization into account. Yep, I agree. <clears throat> That's where you enter the Nomad, one of the coolest ladders in the game. Enter the Nomad. The, the Nomad reimagines the synergy between pilot and machine, removing friction points that impede total control. Get in, take off, and head out on a new adventure. I do actually like it. It's very alienish, and uh, it sounds cool, and it works flawlessly. The cargo bed. The Nomad features 24 SEU exterior cargo bed, offering an ambitious payload for its class. Yeah, yeah. You know the Cuddy Black, which is like what ten dollars more, fifteen dollars more. It has 46 SEU, so you know almost double what the nomad has and it has another laser and it has another bed it doesn't have like galley stuff but it can hold more vehicles um it's size two components and stuff so it, it's it's kind of a rough trade-off there for for 10 or 15 bucks I mean, it might be 20 bucks now but uh yeah i mean do you want to splurge for the cutty black because i think it is still the premium starter ship over the nomad even though some people don't consider it a, a starter ship. <clears throat> Versatile utility. With a size one multi-purpose utility mount at the rear, the Nomad is suited to varying and extreme situations. Yeah, we'll see what can mount up there. Um, 
Hopefully we can get some tractor beam stuff mounted up there and things like that. That would be pretty cool. I haven't heard much about what's going to go up there. So if you guys know, please uh, feel free to comment in the comments below. Um, it gives us our specs here and then some pictures. Uh, Adventure awaits the interior of the Nomad. That's a cool picture. Whoa, don't scroll past it too fast. There we go. Um, someone loading up cargo in the Nomad. It actually looks pretty cool. It looks bigger than what it normally is. Um, then there's Nomad's flying in formation and the interior. This is a picture of Silas Kerner and the CEO of Consolidated Outland and the Nomad chasing the dream. When we introduced the Mustang line back in 2944, our aim was to reshape the dream of spaceflight. Since then, much has changed in the way we traverse the stars. The universe itself has expanded with infinite opportunities waiting out there for all of us, brave enough to chase them. The time has come to reshape the dream yet again, to push further than we ever have before. The time has come for the Nomad. And I, I associate Silas Kerner with uh, like an Elon Musk type of person. Uh, maybe Consolidated Outland is the Tesla of its day. Who knows? And then, uh, let's see, Blast in the Verse and your Nomad. It is $80 uh, right now. Uh, Warbond Plexus come with lifetime insurance. Okay. And then uh, some paints. They're selling paints. The Jackal, best paint. And then the Polar paint. Uh, the other paints you had to get at the time they were on sale. Then there's uh, the ability to upgrade. <clears throat> and then getting your starter pack with the Nomad. So that is it for the Nomad uh, webpage slash brochure. We're going to go up here to the video of uh, with Whitley's guide and let's cut over to that. For 2950, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo is continuing its tour of Stanton, landing on the snowy slopes of Microtech. And while the weather outside may be frightful, the offerings at the Tobin Center are nothing short of delightful. Welcome to Whitley's guide. In the Consolidated Outland Pavilion, they're gearing up to unveil Silas's all-new Nomad, a ship that couples a welcome dash of unconventional design with bare-bones, no-frills performance under the hood. I had the powers that be at Whitley's arrange some hands-on time with the ship ahead of its release so I could go on a good old-fashioned excursion. From my very first glimpses of its hull, I've been bit hard by the travel bug. As we prepared for our trip, Jimmy got intimately acquainted with the Nomad's 24 SCU capacity external cargo hold. Well done, Jimmy. Over there with the other ones. Out here, finally free of the shackles of civilization, edible food, and air traffic laws, we were able to really flex the Nomad's muscles. Watch this, Jimmy! Let's test out these triple shield silos we're going on about, eh? Oh, Even triple shields are no match for reckless flying. Remember that, kids. How's it looking there, Jim? After sharing a few campfire stories, Jimmy and I decided to turn in under the stars. What was that? Jimmy? Jimmy? The onboard bed provides that extra level of security someone of my stature is used to. And convenient access to the laser repeaters made me rest extra easy. As our expedition came to a close, I couldn't help but feel that I'd tasted true freedom. Which, coming from a person who gets pretty much everything he wants, is saying something. As I spooled up the quantum drive one last time, I knew I'd return to civilization a changed man. And that I'd never needed a shower so badly in my entire life. And here we are, Jimmy, safe and sound at IAE 2950. Now, it looks like they're getting ready for the official announcement, so uh, take over, would you, Jimmy? I've got to get over to the VIP lounge before the open bar closes. Back in 2944, we aimed to reshape the dream of spaceflight. Since then, much has changed.
So my final thoughts on the consolidated outland nomad. It's, it's a good ship. It's, I still don't think it's the most premium starter ship out there. I think the Cutlass Black probably beats it in almost every category. Um, and it, it's only like $20, $25 more. Um, the Cuddy has, you know, more cargo. It has more weapons. It has two beds. It's made for multiplayer. But as a single player starter ship, the Nomad does beat all the other starter ships. It's better than the Mustang. It's better than the Aurora. It's better than the Pisces. Um, and it, it kind of is a jack of all trades. It, it really is. Um, it is not particularly great at anything, but you could do tons of box missions in it. Um, you can do cargo missions at the same time. You can um, do a little bit of dogfighting in it, uh, upgrading the weapons. It has three shields, so that's fantastic for its longevity. Um, you can load up vehicles in it and do things with that. Um, so all in all, it's a good ship. It's cozy. It has a bed. It has really good future gameplay opportunities. And I think that's what's really important um, about the Nomad itself. Um, I do own one. I, I actually bought one and I do like it. I do enjoy it. Uh, I think I'm going to melt a couple of my paints, as I mentioned in the loadout. But uh uh, um, you know, what are your thoughts on the Nomad? Um, do you like it? Is it one of your favorite ships? Do you fly it often? Um, I know it's been seen in a couple of machinimas and that's really cool because it has a lot of versatility to it and it definitely has some role play potential. Um, so that's it guys. That's the video for the CNOU Nomad. Um, thanks for stopping by. If you haven't already and I have earned your your like, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment in the comment sections. It really does help out the YouTube uh, YouTube algorithm. And uh, as I say every time, if the fist don't get you, the lightning bolt will. Good night, Stanton.